Hi, welcome to Making Music. I'm Gary Weinroth from Guitar Showcase, and with me today is our uh, fabulous Mark Blazquez from Fender and Jack Van Breen from Guitar Showcase, the fabulous Jack Van Breen. And I don't know where that noise came from, but hopefully it's not one of these devices. But <laughs> so, so today, our show is about Fender guitars again, once again, and uh, there's three of them here on stage. Uh, Tell us about the VG, the I, virtual I would be, guitar. I'd be happy to. Fender, uh, Fender is, is offering uh, uh, an amazingly wide spectrum of stuff uh, this year. We have a bunch of new stuff coming out, everything from cutting edge technology to uh, kind of refinements on some vintage stuff to some old historic ideas. What I'm holding in my hands here happens to be a VG Strat. And this is something that we designed in conjunction with our good friends at Roland. Uh, the VG stands for virtual guitar. Now what you've got here is a standard American-made Stratocaster, just like you grew up with, knowing all your heroes play, all that kind of stuff. A regular old Stratocaster. So when you play this thing through an amplifier, which we now have to turn on, um, when you play this thing through an amplifier, you're going to get all of the regular classic Fender tones that you've come to know and love through your life. So, so like. Uh, stuff that you know and love through all the years you've heard all these kind of classic great iconic Fender guitar tones. Um, what we're bringing new to the table now starts with these two knobs right here. I'm not sure if you can see these. There's one has an M on it and that stands for mode and this one has to do, this one says tone and that has to do with tuning. We'll get to that in a second. So the mode knob says N-S-T-H-A on it right down here. So what happens is when you move this off the N position to the S position, you're going to get the sound of a Stratocaster, just like the one you're playing, but with some added advantages, such as Stratocasters can be a little noisy, you know, single coil pickups, it's part of the sound of the guitar. It's not just strats, but any single coil pickup will, uh, will be a little noisy. A digital guitar is much, much quieter, but still sounds just like a strat. <laughs> So what you're hearing right there is a digital Stratocaster. Sounds pretty chewy and good. Um, what you have next on the palette is a Telecaster from us. So a much brighter, kind of chimier, honkier sound. Right, Tele sounds. Oh, those really chimey sounds that you're used to hearing on a Tele, you know. Great telly sounds right there. Then the next step is humbuckers. So this would be something that would typically be associated with either a bigger, heavier rock sound or maybe like a, a cool kind of a jazz tone. So it's a bigger sound. Really nice sound in the neck. All the tone knobs and the volume knob work exactly the way you'd expect it to work on a regular guitar. Um, so there's nothing tricky about this guitar. You just pick it up and put it on, put whatever kind of strings you want on it, and set it up however you want it to, pe to play and feel, because it is an American-made Stratocaster. And then you determine from that point what kind of other guitars you might want to dabble in on a song or two, or maybe on a, in a session in the studio. One of the most amazing things about this guitar is when you rotate this M knob back to the final setting, which says A, this opens up a whole library of acoustic guitar sounds. So. All these different acoustic tones. Including some resonators so that you have some, uh, some old stuff similar to what Jack is doing over here. Uh, Still a Stratocaster, right? So if you just switch this thing on back over here, you just got... But there's one little quick thing I want to show you before we leave the acoustic. In the acoustic model settings, uh, the guitars can be either dry, like this, or we actually put some built-in reverb on the guitar, so... There's a little space, 
So if you happen to be doing, if you have your whole guitar rig set up to do your electric guitar tone, when you switch over for a song or two to do an acoustic, you still have some sort of processing, some sort of goo, some padding, some comfort zone for you. So we have just scratched the surface now. While this guitar is in any of these settings back here, anything except the end, because in the end setting, you're just using the regular stock Stratocaster sounds. Once you move off to the digital setting, so we'll start with the digital Strat, what you're going to get then is access to this T knob, which is all of your tunings. So I am in a Strat now that is just regular old Strat tuning. If I grab this knob and just move it right over to where it says D, I am in drop D. So that's just the beginning. So you got a drop D tuning at the at the touch of a button. Oh, I love it. It's love fabulous, it. isn't it? Well, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. That, this is this is too much for me all at once here. Now, do you mean to tell me that this is plug and play, mm -hmm. as opposed to a guitar synthesizer that needs off outboard devices, yes. a module or something mm -hmm. that you have to plug into and do all kinds of other narcotic things to? <laughs> so this this is basically any amplifier. Yep. Just this guitar. Any amplifier, though it doesn't sound as good as anything. Uh, it's got to go the Fender, really. You well, have the Fender yeah. This. But yes, <laughs> any, any, fender any kind of Fender amplifier. Any yes. Fender amplifier. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the whole point of this guitar is that all the stuff that it does is completely self-contained. What you have here is just a standard quarter-inch input. You just plug a regular guitar cable in here, plug it into whatever amp you own, whatever Fender amp you currently own. Um, <laughs> and if you don't own one, go buy one from Gary. Uh, and, uh, and then away you go. It's very, very simple. Uh, a couple of quick last things to show you on the tuning sections. Um, we've got the drop D. We've also got an open G tuning. So. Right? Or some dad gad stuff. These are all fun tunings to play around with, but if, if you've ever tried to quickly throw a guitar into an alternate tuning, especially like for just one song, it's, it's really a hassle. It's especially tough. when you have a floating trem, like, uh, like on this guitar. As soon as you change the tension on one string, the guitar goes radically out of tune, and okay, folks, we're gonna take 15 minutes and I'll come back and play one song. Um, then uh, one other tuning that we've got, uh, the setting on the knob says B, and that's for baritone. So baritone gives you the guitar tuned down to a B. So you've got. So that's great for your. Now the other thing that that's good for, depending on what you like to do with your guitars, is uh, setting that to a big scary uh, distortion tone and getting. And you can tell that even though we're doing massive pitch shifting on the guitar, nothing changes. The thing, as a matter of fact, what doesn't change is that your strings don't become all sloppy and floppy and weird. Your guitar still plays exactly the way it played when you were in your normal tuning, right? <laughs> then the last thing is, the last setting is the 12 string setting. And the thing that, the thing to keep in mind is that these tunings are completely independent of the guitars. So you can put a uh, Telecaster down in baritone put, uh, tuning. You could put a Stratocaster in 12 string tuning and get this. Stratocaster in the neck. You know, if you want to, you could go over to your acoustic and get acoustic 12 string. Bar. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, that's yeah. worth the price of admission right there. Absolutely. 12 string with a whammy bar. Who doesn't want that? Um, so, like I said, the guitar starts its life. The VG Strat starts its life as an American made Stratocaster. So, we start there and then we add this technology that, that, uh, that the kind folks at Roland did for us. All of the, the brains, if you will, of this instrument lives in this panel back here. Uh, this is a standard uh, Strat 
trim spring cavity so that there's nothing tricky going on there. And then here's your batteries. So uh, you may be asking yourself, uh, speaking of batteries, how long will this guitar last? Um, with four brand new uh, fully charged AA batteries, you should get about 10 hours of life out of it. Um, we certainly recommend people looking into rechargeable, like the high quality rechargeable batteries that you'd use for digital cameras. Uh, certainly get 10 hours of life um, out of them. The blue light on the front does not mean it's on sale. Uh, <laughs> it means, sorry, uh, what it does mean is that the, that the guitar is active and it's fully charged. As the battery life starts to dwindle, this light will start to flash a little bit, so you'll have some warning. You'll usually have 45 minutes or so of warning of, hey, you should probably change you know, you should change your batteries. And then the other part that I want to show you that's really cool is <clears throat> if you don't heed the blue light and uh, you take the batteries out. So here, the batteries are now out of this guitar and it is still. It's still an American made Stratocaster, which Fail means safe. absolutely, yeah. If all else fails, gee, you're stuck with an American Strat, and that's oh, not God. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but what's beautiful about that is that you can change these pickups into anything if you want. We have a whole line of custom shop and vintage pickups and noiseless and all this kind of stuff that you can put in here. You can put different kind of bridge saddles on here. The guitar is totally modified, modifiable and customizable for you, and then from that point, you still have a stock Strat, a stock Tele, a stock, dual, a stock dual humbucker kind of guitar, and the whole bank of acoustics and all the tunings. So, That's very cool. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's a pretty revolutionary instrument. Um, we got a lot of kudos and won a lot of awards uh, at NAMM, which, which is when we launched this. Absolutely. Uh, which so is, that, that tune you were doing when you opened up here, that acoustic tune, mm -hmm. it, it sounded like there were three acoustic, or a couple of acoustic guitars here, and a dobro. Yep, and uh, that was that was a Stratocaster. That's that's, 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 that's amazing. exactly it. Yeah, that's a Stratocaster going. That is totally amazing. Yeah, and then and then if you want to go back to your Strat, you just grab the knob back there, and you're and you're right back to you know to Strat country. Now we are doing just in case anybody's wondering what I'm touching. Uh, on the floor there. Uh, we are switching, when we go to the acoustics, we are taking that into a full range PA. Uh, PA system. Yeah, which you don't have to do. You could certainly run. It's just a little cleaner than the amplifier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Acoustic doesn't sound bad it through it. It doesn't sound bad. But the way we're used to hearing acoustic guitars is sort of recorded through full range stuff. I want to point out that the lights are wreaking havoc with our uh, Noise. With the noise level on these yes, amplifiers, with our fine our, fender, yeah, but our that, fine fender product. So that, uh, but that's a vintage tone, Gary. That is, that is, because no matter where you are, you're going to have something. <laughs> something's going to be, yeah, something's going to be noisy. Well, speaking of vintage tone, why don't we um, let's move on to the next uh, to the next thing that we brought up at uh, at the big trade show that we did in uh, in January. A couple different guitars here. Um, a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know. Fender is a company that's been around for a long time. We've been around for just over 60 years uh, at this point. Over uh, that span of time, we have made a lot of guitars that a lot of people have really, really loved. Um, this, uh, the VG Strat that I just showed you is based on a contemporary Stratocaster, just the one, just like a regular production like we do today. But a lot of the guitars that we make are recreations and reissues of older guitars, uh, you know, that we used to make. Three of our most popular reissues are a 52 Telecaster, a 62 Stratocaster, and a 57 Stratocaster. They all have their own characteristic sound and vibe and kind of a feel and aesthetics, and there are people that get crazy on exactly how many screws was you know, on the face plate and how many ply was the pit guard and all that kind of stuff. And these, these guitars that we make, these reissue guitars, are so accurate. I will not bore you with the minutia, but you can get as deep into these guitars as you want and compare them to an original, uh, and you will just not see the differences. Now, what we found is that what a lot of people do when they buy these great vintage instruments is they, if they, they either collect them and they put them on display someplace, like you do, uh, which is good, or they say, you know what, this is great, and I'm gonna, I love this thing, and I love the way it sounds, and I'm going to go ahead and take it out and play it, and there's a lot of modifications that will happen along the way. So. 
What we saw was people did certain modifications to these guitars so frequently that we thought, why don't we just take our three most popular reissues and make these modifications available commercially so you don't even have to worry about it. So uh, what I'm holding here on my right is our 52 Tele Vintage Hot Rod. And on my left is our 57 Strat Vintage Hot Rod. So what we've done to these guitars is stayed true to the historical accuracy of a 52, the right kind of body, the right wood, the right finish, all the rest of that kind of stuff but kind of tweaked some of the finer points, like we did a, uh, a we kind of sanded down the back of the neck so the lacquer finish is a little less. So still got a big, big man-sized neck on it like a 52 Tele should. Um, also, most of the vintage guitars, like through the 50s and 60s, uh, the typical radius on the fingerboard, which for, for people who don't know, if you would, um, a radius would be the arc of the fingerboard. So as you look down the guitar this way, a radius would be that. So a smaller radius, like a seven inch radius, has a sharper curve than this guitar, which has a flatter radius, which is nine and a half. Uh, just a little historical lesson for a second. The reason the original ones were all seven and a half inches was because that's the average, if you just let your index finger sort of relax like that, that's on most people, turns out to be about a seven and a half inch radius. Leo Fender being a thinking feller said, make them that way. Over years, people said, you know what I can't do uh, when you're doing that is kind of, So as guitar styles changed from this to playing leads and stuff like that, it became common to flatten the fingerboard out. So on these guitars, we flattened the fingerboards out, we've sanded down the back of the necks, we've put bigger frets on them. We did this whole production run of guitars with thin skin nitrocellulose finish, which is something that you guys are very familiar with, your custom series of guitars that we do for you. Uh, thin skin nitro and, and very well done. Tone. It really does. Yeah, it brings it, out the, the enhances the tone of the wood. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it does. It does. So and, and when we talk to people in our custom shop, people who call up Fender and say, I want you to do a special guitar just for me. More often than not, people will ask for the thin skin, uh, some sort of a nitrocellulose finish. Thin skin happens to be very popular. Um, so some other things. Uh, some uh, the, uh, the the bridge pieces down here. These are the traditional and historically accurate bridge pieces. But if it was really historically accurate, you can't really get a true old telly in tune with itself, right? Intonation, how each string is in tune with the next one. So what we've done is we've angled the bridge pieces. Uh, we also upgraded the pickups with the Seymour Duncan mini humbucker in the in the neck position there, and uh, some really cool stuff. Then on the strats, we don't have a 62 here to show you, but the 57 strat, same idea. Thin skin nitro finish, sanded down the neck a little bit, a much smaller neck on a 57 Strat with a slight V shape in it, um, which means that rather than just being a straight curve there, it actually has kind of a, a V in it, but it's subtle, uh, flatter fingerboard, bigger frets, upgraded pickups, we've got our Sumerian Cobalt noiseless pickups here and uh, a DiMarzio Tone Zone back here. So this guitar, unlike a stock 57, which sounds great, that is a holy grail of a guitar, but they're noisy, you know, that's lights and single coil pickups, we talked about that earlier. So this guitar is all hum canceling all the way through, um, comes with a five-way switch with the old one wouldn't. So the premise with the vintage hot rods was, let's take the guitars that people love, we sell tons of these, um, vintage reissue guitars and kind of bring them up to date, make them a guitar that someone would grab right off the right off the wall and love. I've had some customers really impressed with the fact that Fender will use aftermarket pickups, mm -hmm. Seymour Duncan, DiMarzio, etc., mm -hmm. on their guitars rather than just Fender pickups, which is kind of cool because musicians don't like just one pickup. Absolutely. You know, if if I mean, variety and personality and all that stuff is, is totally the name of the game, especially when you're talking about music, you know? Absolutely. It's personal. Yeah, it ab that's absolutely it. And so we, we take a stab at, you know, what would be a cool thing that we think would be, would be great. It's inevitable that someone's going to buy this thing and take it home and already know, I've got this other pickup that I can't wait to put in here. To but, try, right? Yeah, right. yeah right. absolutely. And for me, I always like the mid-range boost that comes in the hot, in the powerhouse and the Clapton. Yep. yep. That's a, 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 almost a must for me. Yep. So everybody likes to change their guitars a little bit. So that's that's kind of what we're. Uh, well, the VG allows you. Yes. A, a full palette of yes, change. Yes, absolutely. I mean that's amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get my hands on one of those. So when I when I you know, I play in drop D. Uh huh. So I don't have to detune the guitar, and right. all it does is is 
electronically, as it were, drop that D string? Yep. I mean, the, a, the E string to D? Yep, drops the E string down to D in that tuning. So some, some quick questions. Let's get back to the VG, uh, the VG Strat for a second. Um, some quick questions about that people out there may be asking themselves. Um, some guitar technology has been around for a while. You were talking about MIDI guitars before, where you have a pickup like this, and there's kind of a crazy multi-pin cable that comes out and connects to a thing that connects to another thing that makes your guitar sound like a flute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's great. And um, uh, there there were always sort of problems with that. People will talk about. You'll hear words like tracking. Right. You know how well does it track? Well, what people will actually ask. What they're really asking by that is, you know, is there this great delay between when I play a note and when I hear it? You know, is it this big lag between I hit a note and then it takes so long to go through the processing that by the time I hear it, I'm already on to my next thousand notes. Um, so that's that's. An, an issue of tracking. The other thing is, uh, guitars are, are very complicated animals, and you can get one note, or you can get two, right? Or you get all sorts of overtones, and and the whole issue of and subharmonics. Absolutely, and How about when bending. Yeah, and, you, and all that kind of stuff, I mean, which it, can it be very truly on the bends. Also. Absolutely, because the the whole thing is. The thing to keep in mind is there isn't any actual tracking on this guitar. What you're really hearing is you're hearing the actual guitar. Right? That's all the guitar. Now that was the digital guitar. That wasn't the actual strat. You know, you roll it over to the strat. So it's just a matter of what guitar you want. So there is, there really isn't any issue of this thing feeling anything, feeling like anything other than. So no difference in bends, mm -hmm. no difference in tracking, mm -hmm. just a whole palette of flavors that we can play with. Absolutely. So now, if you if you're playing in a band and you just think, you know, I'd love to use an, uh, an acoustic guitar for the intro of this song, or a 12 string in the breakdown, or or I want to do one song and drop D, or two songs and drop Ds. You don't need to bring another guitar for just that song or just that part of that song or or something you just just bring this well the the magic question what's approximate street price of that guitar i mean what's uh, about seventeen hundred dollars so it's not a lot of money compared no. to all the devices you would have to have to get all of those things That's, yeah when you know. when you think about the fact that this is an american-made full this isn't like a, a knocked off or, or a, not a, or copy, a cheaper right. quality yes this is right. exactly if you just pick up a, a regular american strat off the wall it's that's what this deal. thing starts with um, so yeah, there's, no, there's nothing sort of hidden or tricky behind it. You just put a strap on it, put a cable in it, and, uh, and, and away you and go. It, and it does that. It does your resonator guitar. It does, yeah. guitar. does the traditional acoustic guitar. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, several acoustics, and then 12 strings. And, the 12 string, that's yeah. right. It does the 12 string too. Yeah, that's, absolutely. Well, I mean, that stuff. if you were carrying to a gig, same quality as an American Strat, mm -hmm and then a Telecaster, uh -huh. and then a double humbucking from a yeah. great American company, sure. and an you know, acoustic six string, acoustic 12 string, electric 12 string, what, seven guitars yeah. that sure. you have to tune and put strings on sure. at an average street price of anywhere from one to $2,000. At least. You got twelve thousand dollars of guitar right there. Ab yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and another thing. So another little question that, that people do ask me a lot, and I'm sure that, that they ask you guys too, is, you know, what, what about what about the tuning? If if the guitar is out of tune, how will the alternate tuning sound? And uh, we didn't fix that for you. We like to do everything that we can, but tune we, it but, or die. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the tuning is up to you. The onus is on you to do uh, so to do the tuning. We have to do that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, so we got cool. about three minutes to go here, guys. So what are you going to do for us on the way out? And I know you wanted to show them your, your I, I, I resonator. Did, I did want to talk a little yeah, bit about the resonators. Very quickly. Um, and this is a, a technology that came into being in the 20s and 30s. Before yeah. we had electric guitars. Before we had electric guitars. Yeah, because that resonator they makes were, it louder. Yeah. They were, they, loudspeakers are coming into production. And they said, well, if we take this paper cone idea that moves with a magnet, and place it in the body of guitar and use the bridge to move it, we can make the guitar louder without spending a lot of money on the wood. And no electricity. Yeah. If, Gary, if you could play a little bit on the acoustic guitar. Yeah. There's your standard acoustic guitar sound. And the resonator has a little bit more nasally tone. Absolutely. And uh, this one I really like. Uh, actually, this is my personal guitar, and I was really happy when the Fender Corporation took the resonator 
and they added some pickups to it. I've got my electric pickup here that I can play kind of a bluesy thing with. Or I've got a piezo pickup that allows me to do the same thing in a more traditional Delta Blues kind of thing. Absolutely. So I've got all the sounds that I want in one, again, street price is around six, seven hundred dollars for an instrument like well, this. Just keep that song up because you got one minute to go. And thank Perfect. you guys for being here today. Appreciate Happy it. Happy to. Happy to do so.